Hey everybody, this is Will Doggett, Ableton Live Certified Trainer. I just want to say thanks so much for checking out this tutorial. Now the tutorial you're about to watch is a full lesson from my brand new Getting Started with Ableton Live 11 course. You can find more information about that by clicking the link in the description. But I also have a free gift for you just for watching and checking out this tutorial. Click the link in the description and you can sign up to get my free Getting Started with Ableton Live 11 guide. All right, let's waste some more time. Let's get to it. Okay, so in this lesson, let's talk about some of the changes and improvements to Session View. There's a lot of stuff added to Session View. Uh, so let me take you over into Ableton and we will start to dig in. First thing you're probably going to notice is just the layout and design of the master track. So over here, we have our scene numbers, the number for each scene, um, kind of in its separate little section here. So what's really nice about this is I could go into scene one, for instance, click right here uh, on the scene. Uh, and do command R to rename and let's call this a section. Okay, you press tab call this B section So with having the scene numbers over to the right here It makes it really really simple and easy to see both the name as well as the actual scene uh, Number to the right one nice thing one nice addition to this is as I drag my scenes around This number is going to update to show me. Okay, this is the fifth scene So now my a section is the fifth scene my B section has now become the first scene I can move that back up to the top if I want to, uh, to make that a little easier to see. Now, one of the, the biggest additions to session view, you may not notice at first, let's zoom out a little bit, is if I double click now on the scene, we have a brand new view in Ableton Live, and that's called the scene view. So over here in the scene view, I get uh, settings and functionality for each one of my scenes. So there's my name, there's my scene number. Again, I could uh, right click to rename this if I wanted. I could choose a color and actually change the color of my scene if I wanted to there. Um, let's change the tempo and time signature of this. So right now it's set to their default of 120 and 44. So I can go in here, let's type 85 BPM, hit return. That's going to basically enable that. Let's change our time signature to 24. Okay, so hit return and that's going to change. So now I've changed my tempo and my time signature. If we go look at our scene though, uh, we don't see that, right? We don't see that information. So it used to be in session view, we'd have to do command R, rename, and rename uh, our scene to add our tempo and time solution. Now we can do that in scene view, but where do we see that in our scene? Well, Ableton, of course, they've thought of everything. Now if we move our mouse to the left of the master track here and drag, you'll see this brand new field that's going to show us our tempo and our time signature. I think they did really, really well in this. Makes it super easy to see. Um, and edit, uh, you know, all of this content here, which is which is awesome. Uh, I could edit this tempo and time signature directly from here as well too. Again, let's make this maybe 115. Let's make this 34 if we wanted. And again, if I zoom back out, double click on that, you see that info is updated as well there in scene view. And then again, I can drag to the right to hide that. I can drag even further to the right to hide that scene number. And to hide those numbers so the master track again small but big change that makes a big difference the master track gets smaller uh, than it ever has before now within scene view as well too are uh is is a really really huge improvement to this and this is follow actions on scenes now i'm going to talk more about this in the next lesson so um, i'm not breezing past this or i am breezing past this past this but i'm doing it intentionally because in our next lesson, we'll dig deep into follow actions. But what we can do is enable follow actions um, here and, uh, and choose, you know, what do we want to do? Go to next, go to a specific uh, scene, um, all sorts of really cool things. And either link this to, uh, you know, basically say, how, how long do we want this to happen? Um, you know, after a measure, two measures, that sort of thing. Again, bear with me. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, if I do enable a follow action, we get kind of a new icon here, which basically means uh, a follow action has been triggered. Um, again, we'll, I keep saying it, we'll talk about that in our next lesson. But I do want to mention while we're here, we do have the addition of a brand new button, which is called uh, Enable Follow Actions Globally. So when I click that, I'm going to enable them. And when I disable it, uh, it's going to disable follow actions. This is going to be, again, really helpful when I'm in kind of a live looping scenario performance to where maybe I have follow actions planned to jump me between clips, but I want to stop all of those. I can uh, uh, disable that so that I temporarily uh, stop all my follow actions if I want. Another thing we can do if we go into mini map mode, we can actually mini map 
uh, that enable follow actions globally button so we could start and stop that if we want to. We also have a brand new cancel scene launch button, which basically if I have a scene queued up to, to launch, um, I can stop that and that's going to stop, you know, stop us from going to the next scene essentially. Again, we'll talk about that more um, in, uh, in our next lesson. A couple other things I want to show you in session view uh, before we move on. Uh, let me create a couple clips here, just kind of dummy MIDI clips. Uh, no audio, no data in them, uh, just the clips themselves. Uh, I'm going to select the first one, hold shift and click the last one. Okay, and then when I do Command R, which is my ability, um, my rename function, let's title this verse. All right, let, let's say something like Song One. When I press Return, now every single one of those clips has been renamed. So I think this could be really, really helpful, really useful if, for instance, you're taking a group of clips and you want to change the name uh, so that you know exactly that all of these clips correspond to this particular song, this particular section of the song, whatever it is. Uh, the ability to rename all our clips is really helpful. Uh, final thing I want to talk about in this lesson is if I trigger one of these clips, again, there's no data, there's no uh, information in this. That's perfectly fine. If I go and trigger my stop all clips, which I could also mini map, so if I did command M, I can mini map that button. But if I click the stop all clips button, it's now going to flash before it stops all the clips. And so that's just kind of a great visual indicator to let you know, hey, uh, you, you triggered stop all clips. Just make sure you know that dummy before you accidentally do something you regret. So now I've kind of buried the lead here. Follow actions on scenes. This is an amazing, amazing feature. Let's talk about that next in uh, individual lesson. And we'll dive deep on how to set that up and what that means for live performance in session view. Hey, thanks so much for checking out this tutorial. As a reminder, don't forget about that free gift that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Click the link in the description to download that for free. Also, if you enjoyed this video, I would love to have you give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified whenever we post new content, start a live stream. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, everybody. Bye.